December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. I had a date with my wife to be. I had never seen her before. Well, I, that's what I had on December 7th. I tell her that I got mixed up or something. If I did, it turned out good. So, so we're still married after 70 some years. So you had a date with your wife to be on December 7th, 1941? Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I tell people that the battle started then, the war is over, but we're still going on. <laughs> <laughs> See my kids on back there laughing, they must know something. <laughs> I knew darn well I was going to get called. We all did at that age. Oh, I went down and enlisted as soon as I got to be one a Started out here, went to Buffalo, Chicago, Great Lakes, Illinois, New York City, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, Mediterranean, all of it from the streets there, the opening of the Mediterranean clear to the, where the canal goes down through it on the east end of it. Mm -hmm. We covered all that territory. Then I was sent back home when I went to Chicago or Cleveland and from there to the west coast of San Francisco and I wound up there in Manila in the Philippines and covered three or four of those islands in between San Francisco and Manila and then that was when the war ended. Went off to the Mediterranean, you were, you, you were assigned to a a ship? Yes. The name of it was PC-1227. As mm -hmm. a, I remember the history of, the, of those PCs. They were, they were about half the size of a destroyer. And that's what we did was convoy duty. Going across the Atlantic, we were leading the whole thing out for a long ways across there. And they put us further in the lead. We were number one in the whole convoy until we hit the Mediterranean and then they singled down to single file. Well, most of the way across, we went across in front of the convoy, between the convoy and the escorts that were taken, which was mounted to several destroyers and Ds and PCs and SCs and so on and so forth. Were you worried about U-boats, submarines? Hey, yeah. That's what we were worried about, yeah. That was our main job, of hunting them. Then when we got one, we found them, then they said, don't fire. Really? They don't drop depth charges because the destroyers were, did most of that work. What would happen on the ship when, that, when there was a, a detection? Was there kind of a... Alerts? How did it Yes, there was. Generally, it was general quarters call. Was there? For the camera, what's that mean, general quarters? That means everybody goes to their station? Everybody has a station. Mm -hmm. All the way from the captain down to the us guys in the engine room. After I got aboard in New York City, we went from there to Guantanamo Bay and Cuba back all summer long. It take us nearly a month to make the trip down there back, because I think our I think our top speed was about eight knots or something like that, which is slow. What was your job assignment? I was in the engineers force. I made the thing go. Oh, uh, between New York and Guantanamo Bay, I think we went at least a half a dozen times. Ever during the summer, so that was that was pretty good duty during the summer. Then you find your way into the Pacific. So you're in the Atlantic, and then you find yourself in the Pacific. Right. And w w what ship were you assigned to there? YMS one nine six. And what was that? Minesweeper.
Mine sweeping was a very precarious operation, and many fatal casualties occurred due to the enormity of the explosion when one was triggered inadvertently. I didn't like it. How would you even know that there was a mine out there? I remember what they called them. It reminded me of an old-fashioned bed spring. They towed it behind the ship. When they'd come into a minefield, they'd hit the cable from these mines. If they didn't set the mine off, why well, then they knew where there was one. And that's where the destroyers came in. They'd come in and made runs on them and dropped depth charges on them. The sweeping method employed here is using an oil piece of float, a paravane type device used in conjunction with a submerged kite which trailed from the stern a long wire with a cutting edge. Hopefully, this would release a mine suspended from the seabed. So the idea was really to clear a lane right. for the destroyers. Yeah. Card game going on all the time. Yeah. And they weren't general card games either. Really? Some of those guys, they'd be broken two days after payday. <laughs> yeah. And the other guy would be rich two, two days after payday. So well, that's the way it went. Yeah, there was the time, you have to talk about the time you spotted a... A whale. Yeah. That was my first trip out. They didn't have room for me in the engine room where I was supposed to be. So they put me up on the top side. And top side meant up on the, way up in the top, there, as far as you could get. Right. And I was up there when we saw those whales. And we were headed right for them. And I wanted to report it to the bridge, but I couldn't. I couldn't make myself talk. So somebody down on the flying bridge below me saw that whale before we hit it. And we missed it. Was I glad we did? Did you initially think when you saw it that it was a submarine? Yes, I did. That's why it scared me so, was the fact that it was, I thought it was a submarine. But it wasn't, it was a whale. <laughs> we were in Manila. Uh, did you guys celebrate at all? Was there... No, because we were on one of these mine, or not mine lane, but I mean, uh, putting light bulbs into a mine, into searchlights. Because I more or less wanted to walk in on them, which I did when I came home from the Mediterranean, too. Were they surprised, or just kind of like, whoa? I, I think they were glad to see me. If they weren't glad, they were good actors. <laughs> 